Hi everyone, in this video you are going to learn about clamping circuit theorem. Before going into the clamping circuit theorem, let us see what do you mean by clamper we know already. Clamper is nothing but a DC restorer or DC inserter or we can say it is a level shifter simply. Nothing but if any sinusoidal signal or any type of signal that we have taken at the input of this clamper that simply shifted either positive side or negative side with respect to the ground. Okay, uh, we have seen uh, various types of clamping circuits, positive clamper, negative clamper and uh, different circuits. But among all those, we have seen all of them as ideal clamping circuits. But practically, we should have a resistor in parallel with the diode. See, we have seen clamper needs a capacitor followed by a diode that diode may be connected in the forward direction or it may be connected in the reverse direction depending upon the positive or negative clamper. This is what the general or conventional clamper we have. Input is applied at this position before the capacitor and output is taken across the diode. This is about ideal clamping circuit. Ideal clamping circuit. But practically, practically this circuit is not valid because when a unsymmetrical waveform is applied to such a clamping circuit, it takes some time to go into the steady state response unless otherwise the input waveform is a unsymmetrical waveform. See, suppose if this circuit is valid for symmetrical waveforms. Symmetrical waveforms. What do you mean by symmetrical waveform? Symmetrical waveform is nothing but which is having the positive peak and negative peak exactly at the average of this or at the zero axis or DC level is at the center of the input signal. Suppose this is the input signal I am taking for this input signal zero level DC level is at the center. You think about whatever the positive peak is equal to the exactly the negative peak. But for unsymmetrical signals this type of waveform is not at all valid because the positive going signal and negative going signal when you are applying to this diode, diode is coming into on state during positive peak at that time the capacitor is in charging. Okay, after that again there is a sudden change in the input, the, uh, again the input will be going from positive to negative. So, diode comes into the reverse biaser condition then we are taking the loop equation so that some change in the sh level shifting will be done but it as it is in the exactly zero position then it will be uh, like the output is nothing but a shifting version either positive side or negative side depending upon the direction of the diode. But when you are having a signal like unsymmetrical signal with uh, completely the signal may be in one direction either positive side or negative side see here I am showing the difference and see this is the symmetrical signal and this is unsymmetrical signal where the signal is completely shifted towards the positive. Now if this type of input signal is applied at the clamping circuit then it takes some time to stabilize the signal. So it consists of both transient response, transient response and as well as steady state response, steady state response. Okay, so these two signals, these two signals will lead the signal, will take the uh, output signal to stabilize the steady state response after some time. Then practical circuits are for such type of waveforms, ideal, ideal diodes are not preferred, ideal circuits are not preferred, then a resistor should be added in series with the capacitor and one more resistor should be added in parallel with the diode. This is the output diode take this as resistor R2 capacitor and R1 or we can say it is the RS or, or something like that it depends on your notation and this is the input voltage source something like Vn. 
okay this is the practical clamping circuit which is used for unsymmetrical waveforms because whatever the signal i have shown there that signal will be taking some time to go into the stability okay i will draw here both input and as well as output waveforms so that you can understand how the input and output waveforms will be having the different areas in positive and as well as negative this is the waveform now when this waveform is applied to the practical clamping circuit after some time it goes into the stability because it is see see here the input waveform is above the reference level zero axis this is the input voltage but here the output waveform will be started at the same position where the input waveform is but after some time it go slowly comes down towards the zero axis and the signal will be shifted like this this is the steady state response of this particular input waveform the area covered during this pulse to peak is af that is the area covered during pulse to peak and this is the area covered during negative peak it is known as ar area in the reverse direction area in the forward direction of the diode okay that depends upon the diode situation whether it is in the forward biased condition or in the reverse biased condition the names are given okay now what the clamping circuit theorem states is the clamping circuit theorem states that for any input waveform under steady state condition the ratio of the area af under the output voltage curve in the forward direction because the diode is in the forward direction in this af area okay so af under the output voltage curve in the forward direction to that in the reverse direction ar is equal to arf by r so the clamping circuit theorem however i will write now af by ar is equal to rf by r af by ar is equal to rf by r what is rf and what is r af by af ar i have shown you here so af is nothing but the area covered during forward direction of the diode and area ar is nothing but area covered during negative direction of the during reverse direction of the diode and rf is the resistance exhibited by the diode when it is in the forward biased condition and r is the resistance during the diode is in the reverse biased condition okay so statement the clamping circuit theorem states that it states that for any input waveform for any input waveform because see this is not only valid for square waveform what i have shown here this is valid for all the types of input waveforms so whether it is a triangular rect or any sinusoidal or any type of waveform which is having both positive and negative peaks for any input waveform under steady state conditions under steady state conditions the ratio of the area af the ratio of the area af under the output voltage curve output voltage curve in the forward direction to that in the reverse direction ar reverse direction ar is equal to the ratio what is that ratio rf by r rf by r 
okay so this is the statement you should not violate the statement the statement you have to write like this only okay camping circuit theorem states that the ratio the ratio of the area in the forward direction to the area in the reverse direction is equal to the resistors ratio which is nothing but rf by r okay so now let us consider let us consider this is the uh, 0th instant and it is t1 instant and it is t1 plus t2 instant okay this one and this one and this one okay let us consider this is 0 instant t1 and it is t1 plus t2 okay so in the interval 0 to t1 so what happens the input waveform is in the positive peak so that makes the diode comes into on state so what about the capacitor capacitor charges and some current is flowing through the circuit okay so what is that current that current we are taking it as IEF of T because the diode is in the forward direction during 0 less than T less than T1 diode D is said to be on state diode D is said to be on state then current flows so that is IEF IEF is equal to IEF of T is equal to VF of T by VF of T by RF I f of t is equal to V f of t by R f. So, let us take the uh, circuit equivalent circuit diagram for this one. It is the input voltage V in and capacitor. Just I am taking the resistance in vertical direction R 1. Now, this is the equivalent resistance. See, when diode is in on state, it exhibits some forward resistance RF. That forward resistance RF and this resistance R2, they are in parallel to each other. So, R2 parallel RF. So, R2 parallel RF, this is R2 parallel RF. Okay. Or something like uh, RF it is forward resistance rf dash and we are taking it as rf okay this is the output voltage output voltage we are taking across this resistance this is rf okay then what is the charge then what is the charge output voltage you see forward current is flowing through this one if IF. So, IF is equal to VF of T by VF of T is nothing but voltage across the diode. VF of T is nothing but where VF of T is voltage across diode. We can say output voltage. VF of T or we can say output voltage or diode voltage all are same. Okay. This is VF of T. Now, the charge gained by the capacitor during this forward direction. The charge accumulated by capacitor is what is the charge accumulated by the capacitor Q1 is equal to during the positive period 0 to T1 IF of T dt during positive period IF of T DT that is equal to what is IF of T here we have just calculated so 1 by RF take it as 1 by RF out and 0 to T1 it is VF of T DT VF of T DT see this is the output waveform and for this output waveform now we are discussing in this particular period 0 to T1 and this is the area we are talking about and this area we can write it as AF. So, that is equal to the integration in that particular period from 0 to T1 uh, of that signal we can write it as area AF by RF that is Q1. Hope you understand. Now, coming to the reverse bias condition. T1 less than T less than T1 plus T2. What about the diode? D is said to be off state and the diode is simply acting as 
a reverse resistance R. So I am just redrawing the circuit with the help of a reverse resistor R which is equal to the reverse resistance parallel the resistance R2 and across which we are taking the output take this output as VR because the diode is in the reverse direction and it is the input voltage current IR okay IR flows in the same direction or reverse direction IR flows in the reverse direction sorry this is the direction okay now IR is equal to IR of T is equal to VR of T by R R is nothing but original resistance R2 and internal resistance of the diode. Now charge accumulated, the charge accumulated by capacitor during this particular period T1 to T1 plus T2 is Q2 is equal to integral T1 to T1 plus T2 I R of T by T d t is equal to 1 by R take it out and integral T1 to T1 plus T2 V R of T d t. So, this is nothing but area A R because the diode is in the reverse bias condition. So, this is the area we are talking about there with respect to the voltage. So, this area is said to be V R. Now, this is Q2. Okay, so during this total period for one complete cycle, we can equate these two. So, for one complete cycle, for one complete cycle, the charge accumulated by the capacitor is equal to the charge lost by the capacitor. So, we can say Q1 is equal to Q2 or the total charge is equal to 0. So, Q1 uh, minus so one is in the positive direction another one is in the reverse direction so q1 minus q2 is also equal to 0 so we can say af by rf is equal to ar by r that is equal to this is what the statement says af by ar is equal to rf by r okay so this is what the clamping circuit theorem states. So, in the forward direction area covered by that waveform to the reverse direction area covered is equal to the ratio of R of by R. This is what the clamping circuit theorem. Very, very, very important. Definitely you may get this question in the examinations from this pulse and digital circuit subject.